at number one, Mark Brennan on Instagram. Any possibility that in the future the car park could be expanded? And I think we have expanded on that before. Um, I think it's going to be difficult. The only way you could probably expand the car park, and it's something we'd obviously look to do moving forward, would be to purchase some of the the um, industrial units down Anson Road. Um, but again, it's, it's, they've got to want to sell, and we've got to have the financial backing to actually actually, actually go and buy the units. Has to be said that when you go away to some of the other League Two clubs and possibly even League One, uh, we do have still a vastly superior car park to most. Yeah, I think Notts County on on Saturday being one of them actually, we pulled up and it was just a small slither of land where there was enough just to get your car down there and and, and get a car parking space. But obviously, car parking and general expansion is. If we do want to do that, then it's something we need to look at, i.e. The, the units around the ground. And I think the north side is possibly now the only area where we really can because we're landlocked in the other three sides. Um, and in regards of cost per square meterage, actually industrial units work out the cheapest. So I'm assuming if that's what we was going to look at in the future, that's the route we'd go down. People across social media, any news on the increase in ground capacity? It seems to be taking forever. It does seem to be taking forever. Um, it's Unfortunately, it's out of our hands now. We've done all the work our side and everything's been put to the safety advisory group, which as you probably know is made up of all the emergency services and, and the council, and uh, we're just waiting for them to sign it off. David Brown on Facebook, trying to get a beer in the Upper South Stand is difficult. So remind me not to go there. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps, <laughs> perhaps railings or a one-way in and out system and more staff. More beer equals more revenue and less frayed tempers. Yeah, t- totally agree with you. Um, as you're probably aware, we've brought in a company called Centre Plate. They do a lot of clubs, you know, in, in all four leagues in this country and big sporting events in America. And I know that they're looking at a, a number of initiatives on a kiosk by kiosk basis where the process can be speeded up. Great. Oscar on Instagram, what's the latest on, or indeed is there a latest on half season tickets? Yeah, we was due to go on sale with half season tickets in the next week or so but with the advent of a, of a home fixture for the FA Cup um, we've decided to, to delay it a couple of weeks so we're going to get this this game against Macclesfield out of the way and then follow the following one against Wimbledon and then sometime during that week we'll be looking to go on sale with half season tickets. And I would assume with the way the, the club and the team are going at the moment that it might be quite, uh, quite um, some money to be made out of it yeah. Yeah, um, you've always got to be careful with half-season tickets because if you are going well, um, the people that come in on a match day, uh, the, the, the revenue you get, for, get from them is significantly more per game than what you would do with half-season tickets. But as with any club, you never know what's going to happen with your form um, and you, you really want to get that money in the bank. So as a Christmas present, it's always something that I've been... I've always think is really popular and something that we should be doing as a football club. And as I said, in two to three weeks' time, we will be doing that. Joy on Facebook has ruefully accepted that we can't have the clock back, but could we have a proper clock somewhere in the stadium, especially as the scoreboard one has been playing up lately? Well, the scoreboard one should be fixed. There was a glitch with the software. Um, We was assured it was fixed and then it happened again for the next game. Um, But the last game against Mansfield, it, it functioned correctly. But it is a good point of something really that's not been mentioned before. Do we just get a big standalone clock somewhere else, not necessarily in the Frattening, but somewhere else in the stand? Not necessarily a timer for the game, but an actual clock that, that says what the time is. So um, I'm sure after this interview, that's something that I'll look into. Fans across social media with desire for a more creative atmosphere at Fratton, specifically for the game against Wimbledon, including flag scarves and ticker tape. Is there anything the club can do to help and also control it from getting out of hand, i.e. foolish use use of flares and smoke? Well, flares and smoke bombs are a, are a massive no-no, especially at, at Fratton, which is, I mean, it's bad in all stadiums now, but um, with us being, obviously, having some wooden elements of the stand Um, I'm pretty sure we would get heavy fines if a flare firework smoke canisters was to go off Um, we've rode our luck a few times on that with the FA we've been investigated because there has been instances of it as you know Um, so my job is to protect the club the club's safety and and obviously from a financial point of view ensure we don't get fined so I would urge any fan that's thinking of, of breaching the safety rules edge please don't do it you know we work hard 
to generate as much revenue as we can as a football club. The fans put in generously and to think that a mindless idiot letting off a smoke canister or a pyrotechnic or something like that and we could get 10, 15, 20,000 pound fine, you know, is just, just a bit sickening in my view. Um, however, we are as a club, passionate club, got fantastic supporters and, and we'll do anything we can to help support you know, to, to make it a, a fantastic day with a lot of blue. You know, I know the wall of blue's been been mentioned and that. And as a club, we will if someone comes to us with some ideas and, and wants to see that through, we'll do everything we can to support it. We've already spoken to the PST because, as, as me and you have discussed privately, it's got to be a fan-led initiative, really, in all these things. They only really work if, if they're fan-led. If they're club-led, it sort of falls on deaf ears a little bit. So we'll do anything we can if someone comes to us and says, can we advertise this? Can we publicise this? But yeah, it's something we want short of pyrotechnics, you know, smoke canisters and whatever. And there is a problem with ticker tape that people don't understand, isn't there? The ticker tape, listen, I know there's there's the chain of thought that there is a little bit of health and safety gone mad. Um, and I do get that to a degree because there was all these things we did during the 60s, 70s, 80s, you know, but time moved on and obviously clubs are more security and safety conscious now. They're it's horrible to say, but there were, was a lot of disasters and accidents during this, the 60s, 70s and 80s that resulted in, in quite substantial loss of life. So we got to learn from them experiences. I'm not saying ticker tape on its own contributed to that, but there is a, there is an element of, of the ticker tape of it getting wet, becoming slippy, you know, and, and I know a lot of people listening to this, like, that's bloody stupid, you know, and like, as I say, there is an element of me that thinks that, but these rules and regulations are in there for, for, for for a reason, and that's to protect our supporters. And as chief exec, my job is to enforce them rules. Em on Facebook, what do you think of the home and away record so far this season? It's well, <laughs> a good question, actually. Um, it's, it's the wrong way round, isn't it? If, if you know what I mean. Yeah, our home form is traditionally what would you would associate as an away form, and, and our away form is what you traditionally associate with a home form. Uh, form it's. It's a difficult one. Listen, I'm not really bothered where we get the points from as long as we get to where we want to be this season. Um, and obviously the ambition of the club has been pointed out by the manager, the chairman, and everyone associated with the club is to get promoted. Then really, I'm not really bothered where the, the points come from. Funnily enough, I was looking at Paul Cook's record with Chesterfield when they went up and it is spookily similar. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but he did say that with his previous clubs, one of the things he said in the summer was that October traditionally is quite a bad month for him. And, and I, I did see something posted, I think it was on Facebook, where someone said it was remarkably similar. And, and he had quite a bad October with, with Chesterfield. So I think we did better than what he did then. So actually, we were in advance of that, which is good news. Number eight, when will the club shop be stocking some new logo, blue Pompey beanies and some scarves, etc. Sean on Facebook? We've been on to Sports Direct um, and they're hopeful they're going to be getting a complete new range and stocking before Christmas. And we, we should say there that we, we're governed by the shop, not the other way around. Yeah, exactly right. We're governed by the shop. Um, obviously, from their point of view, they wasn't very happy when we changed the logo because it meant they had to change all the stock and, and they tend to buy in, in, in huge quantities. But c'est la vie. Um, that's the way it goes. And... Um, no, but you know they're, they're little by little they're gradually turning that stock around and getting getting the new logo on on the merchandise. Multiple fans on Instagram. Can we replace Jump Around and We Will Rock You and just stick with Mike Oldfield before the game? And I know a lot of that is personal choice, isn't it? That is personal choice, and I know that before we did that, a lot of people were emailing in going, "It's so depressing the lead up. We need some some songs that are going to get people jumping around and and you know and lifting the atmosphere a little bit." So it's another one of them where. You know, you, you you do what you go in one side and you upset another group, and or you go in one the other group and you upset the other side. You know, that's just the way it is. Very poignant question to end with, Dave Clark on Facebook. Do you get fed up with moaning fans? <laughs> um, what's the saying? You can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. And and I think I after a few beers, yeah, no, yeah, um, no. It's, it's it's one of them that as long as it's constructive. You know, and, and, and these these are not moans I'm, I'm hearing here. These are, are, are constructive questions. Um, there's there's no issues with it whatsoever. Um, I think Pompey, as fans, we beat ourselves up a little bit too much, actually. Uh, I think we've got great fans. I don't think they do moan that much, if I'm being honest. And we, we live in a little bit of a bubble here in Portsmouth, thinking that 
if something goes wrong, it only happens at Portsmouth. Let me tell you, it doesn't. It happens at all football clubs and it happens 10 times worse most of the time. So I think our fans are absolutely brilliant and please keep coming. It's not moaning, it's constructive criticism. And as you know, on my desk, there's a big thank you file for, yeah. with, with, with letters which completely don't moan. No, I mean, this morning I think I've had five letters that we've got to reply to from people praising the club for diff different elements, whether it be coming to see the game on a match day and the experience they had, you know, or, or just generally their shareholders and, and their perception of how well the club is going. So it's not a one-way street. Yeah, we do get complaints, obviously, like any business, or especially a football club. Um, but on the whole, there's a huge amount of positivity. And I think as a club, I'd put our, our fans up there as being one of the most positives in all four divisions. And also to balance it, there are sometimes justifiable moans that, that we learn from. Yeah, there's letters come in and I'll, look, I'll come and speak to you and go, I won't swear, but how did, how did this happen? You know, so, you know, we've got to hold our hands up. We're a professional organisation and and when things go wrong or, or within our control, sometimes things happen that are outside of our control we can do nothing about. But when things do go wrong that are within our control, then we have to hold our hands up, say sorry, learn from it, you know. Like I say, apologise to whoever it's affected and move on.